Well, I, let, me, let me say this. I prefer the Michael Jordan type superstar over LeBron James. That's just my preference. I like the guy who takes the last shot. Gets it to LeBron for three for the win. Yes! LeBron James at the buzzer! Killer instinct. Cleveland triggers in. James, two seconds, one second for the win! Yeah. Oh! That's the type of player that I like. Well, I opened this video with a roast to myself because unlike my 2017 opinion, I no longer stick to a blanket narrative on LeBron. The man has had his fair share of clutch moments in the postseason and after presenting these five times that James literally ended playoff series, he may have you questioning whether the whole lack of killer instinct knock on LeBron is actually true. This is Topic Tackle, let's go. What's good people, JC3 here, and before we get going today, I want to shout out Dan McKeever for being the first person to pick up some Topic Tackle merch. After nearly eight years of producing content on YouTube, I finally decided to release merch, so if you want to support my efforts on here, links to the Volume 1 collection are below this video. It was certainly easy to say that LeBron lacked killer instinct when he scored not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, but eight points in Game 4 of the 2011 NBA Finals en route to being upset by the Mavs 4-2. His chance to redeem himself came in 2012, and the Heat were already slided to begin these finals as Vegas oddmakers favored the Thunder to open the series. KD and Westbrook were 23 years old each, and Harden was 22. They were going up against an apex prime LeBron at 27, Bosch at 27, and Wade at 30. The 2011 Finals meltdown loomed over the Heat, and after Game 1, a 105-94 Thunder win in which KD dropped 36, wasn't looking much better. Game 2 was pivotal. With the 2-3-2 format, a Thunder win guaranteed that they would return to OKC for Game 6 if necessary. Miami jumped out to an early 18-2 lead and led big for most of the game. The Thunder made a run in the fourth, cutting the deficit to as little as two. But the ensuing Heat victory was in large part thanks to James, who in the final five minutes scored six points, and his biggest play actually came after a miss. With 12.3 seconds left, Durant caught the ball in the inbound with a chance to tie. James was out of position. He had to scramble back into the play. He avoided the foul and bothered Durant's shot just enough that the attempt fell short. And after securing the rebound, James calmly stepped to the line and nailed two, making it a perfect 12 for 12 on the night from the stride. The whole series shifted. The Heat were able to win in five on their home court. With clutch plays, LeBron effectively ended the Thunder's chance of returning to OKC, where they were 9-0 before game two. For number four on the list, we don't have to look that far into the past. Games 6 and 7 of the 2018 Eastern Conference Finals were two of the most memorable refuse to lose games I've ever watched LeBron James play. Down three games to two, James posted 46 with two step back threes from virtually the same spot on the wing in clutch time to tie the series. And remember, this is a guy who had the supporting cast of J.R. Smith, Jeff Green, George Hill, Kyle Korver, and Tristan Thompson. It was like 2007 all over again in 2018. Even though the Celtics were without Kyrie, LeBron's Cavs shouldn't have won this series. After Tatum, yeah, on James in the fourth quarter of Game 7, it was over for Boston. From that moment on, LeBron scored six, dished an assist to Hill that pretty much sealed it. 35 points, 15 assists, and nine rebounds in Game 7 to end the series. Now, LeBron showed glimpses of having a killer instinct before the 2011 Finals nightmare that officially woke him up. The most notable of these glimpses was Game 5 of the 2007 Eastern Conference Finals. The Cavs had just won two straight games at home to even the series with the Detroit Pistons, and they needed to win at least one game in Detroit to mathematically win the series. So LeBron decided to do something that still seems mathematically impossible when you consider the odds of it ever happening again. Now, green on the play-by-play -play sheet means a made basket. Cleveland, or should I say LeBron, is on the left and Detroit is on the right. From the 217 mark in the fourth quarter until the final made basket in double overtime, LeBron scored every point for the Cavs, totaling 25 straight points against the second best defensive team in the league by points per game allowed. Yeah, a 22-year-old LeBron dropped 48 points, including 25 straight, on the defending Eastern Conference champions in their house to take a 3-2 lead back to Cleveland in which the Cavs would close. And this was his supporting cast. Number two on the list involves a game that is widespread considered the greatest game that James has ever played. I mean, do I even have to explain this? I won't, actually. Here's what LeBron had to say about it. My mentality was like, if we lose, Pat Riley may break us all up. And I don't want that. It might be the quickest breakup in basketball history. And not only 
They might break it all up. My legacy gonna take a huge, huge hit. And this shows that the greats really do consider their legacy. It's not just some made up media narrative. And with his legacy on the line, LeBron officially ended the Celtics in the series that night, scoring 45 on 73.1% field goal shooting while grabbing 15 boards. The Heat went on to win in seven games. And before we get to number one, the honorable mention goes to literally every time LeBron played the Raptors in the postseason, especially in 2018. We'll be back to LeBronto for the fourth quarter after this. LeBronto, LeBronto. So disrespectful. And the top spot goes to Draymond Green for swiping LeBron down low, thus getting suspended, and Clay Thompson for saying this after game four. What did you say Clay said? Clay said, I guess he just got his feelings hurt. <laughs> it was at this moment that he knew. It's over, ladies and gentlemen. These stats would be upgraded to 29.7, 49.4, 11.3, and 8.9 by the end of the series because of two straight 41-point outbursts from James in games five and six and a triple-double in game seven. Yes, Kyrie helped him out, but there was a clear turning point after Clay's comments in which LeBron chose to effectively end the series. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. What's the best game you've ever seen LeBron play? I'll be back with more Topic Tackle coming soon. Stay solid, people.